Today we start our build of the OpenRC F1 Racer. It's starting to get warm outside and what better way to bring nerdy outdoors than to build an RC car. This is the OpenRC F1 Racer by Daniel Norrey. It's almost fully 3D printed and it's been a very popular project within the community. This video is just going to be getting the shell together and then I'll do other videos later about adding the electronics. Daniel does already have a great set of videos on how to build this car, but this video is going to be a more condensed version of that content. If you get stuck, please go check out Daniel's videos. Now, let's get into it and see what it takes to get all this together. Here's all the printed parts you'll need. This is all PLA plastic except for the tires and these are in TPE flexible. All the red parts are Proto Pasta Candy Apple Red Metallic, developed with Chuck Hellebuck. All the blue parts are Proto Pasta High Five Blue, developed with Joel Telling. And all the silver parts are Proto Pasta Stardust Glitter Flake. The tires are printed in inexpensive Inland Brand TPE. All of the PLA parts were printed with 35% infill with four outer shells. And the tires were printed with 10% infill with two outer shells to give them a little softer compound. You will need a chassis rear plate, a chassis front plate, a motor cover, a center body, a center body lid, a front piece, and a nose piece. You'll need a lock pin to connect some of the body parts together. There's a camera mount to go on top of the car a left and right rear view mirror, and you'll need a left and right main turning vane. You'll need a rear axle, a left and right axle mount, and a spur gear. You need two rear rims and two front rims, two wheel lock nuts for the back wheels, four tires, two front wheel hubs, two front wheel axles. You'll need a front lower steering part, and a front upper steering part. You'll need the front steering block and the top and the bottom part of the servo saver. The bottom part does require some support to print. Two steering push pins and a servo holder for the front. The rain light diffuser, the rear wing, and a front spoiler. And here's all the non-printed parts you'll need just to build the body. Four 8 by 12 by 3.5 bearings, two 12 by 18 by 4 bearings, a couple of M3 washers, around 20 M3 nuts. You'll need roughly 25 M3 by 8 millimeter countersunk screws, three M3 by 10 millimeter countersunk screws, and four M3 by 12 millimeter countersunk screws. The build does call for some M3 by 8 mm button head screws, but I found this is more for aesthetics and you can get by with countersunk screws if you like. So for the first part of the build, we'll take the front and rear chassis and we'll slide them together. All you need to know is you need to keep both parts with the same side for the countersunk holes. These will go to the bottom. The big parts are a little tricky to print. They can get a little warped, but as long as they're not too bad, you should be fine. So the next thing you need to do is take your axle mounts left and right and press in your 12 by 18 by 4 bearings and two M3 nuts into both pieces. One here, one here, here, and here. The axle mounts will mount on top of the chassis like this, but before you screw them down, you'll want to put your axle in place. And then you can attach it with some M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Now that the axle mounts are attached from underneath, you can slide your spur gear onto the motor side. You want the flange part of the gear to be to the outside of the build. Now we move to building the front steering assembly. You need to remember which one of these pieces is the top and which is the bottom. The one with the horizontal holes is the bottom one. Vertical holes is the top one. So we'll attach our steering block to the top steering mount. You need to remember that this cutout needs to go to the back of the car, so it'll set like this. Load some M3 nuts in the spots in the center of the steering block. Then use some M3 by 8 millimeter screws to attach the block to the top steering mount. The block's on the top mount. Now we'll attach the spindles onto this mount. Again, M3 by 8 millimeter screws. The spindles are on. The screws are screwing directly into the plastic, so they don't need to be very tight because they'll be sandwiched together on the top and the bottom. 
Just remember the steering arms need to go toward the back of the car. Now we can attach the top plate to the spindles, but don't attach anything here yet. Just the spindle screws, M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Now you can attach the front axles. They just slide here into the spindle and they screw from the back. I use M3 by 10 millimeter screws for these. The axles are on, now we're going to install the servo saver. For this part, make sure your steering mechanism is facing up. That's the holes that run vertical with the car. The servo saver is two pieces, and it's meant to divide in case you get into a crash so it doesn't strip out your servo arm. This is the top part of the servo saver, this is the bottom part of the servo saver. It goes in the car just like this. Make sure the arm that the servo actually attaches to goes towards the left. This is one of the parts where you probably want to use a button head screw versus a countersunk screw, but I'm going to use an M3 by 10 millimeter screw here because I found the countersunk screws work just fine. So I'm going to use M3 by 10 millimeter. I'm going to connect these two steering links together. And then the connected steering links will screw into this portion of the top of the servo saver. So there's the two links in the top of the servo saver connected. Then this mechanism sets on top of the bottom of the servo saver like that. And this whole thing slides into the steering frame just like this. You'll want to use an M3 by 8 millimeter screw on the top and on the bottom, and you'll also want to slide a washer on top of the servo saver in between this mount. So slide a washer right in here. So the servo saver has been attached from the bottom and the top. Now we'll attach the links to the spindles. Again, they use button head screws for this. I'm using countersunk screws but I'm going to use M3 by 8 millimeter screws from the top. Both links have been attached to the spindles and the steering is complete. Now we'll attach it to our chassis. So the whole steering mechanism sets on the chassis right here. You'll want to connect it with M3 by 12 millimeter screws from the bottom and your M3 nuts will slide right into these holes in the block, one on each side. And the steering mechanism is now attached to the chassis. You can see the nuts right in there and everything appears to be moving. Any of the screws that you put in for the steering mechanism, they don't need to be really tight because a lot of these are actually spinning on its axis. So just get them snug. Now we'll attach the rear wing and the rear light and diffuser onto the axle mounts in the back. You wanna load the diffuser with two M3 nuts, one here and one here. The wing will set on the axle mounts like this, and then the light and diffuser will set on top of that. Then you'll attach it with screws from underneath with M3 by 8 millimeter screws. And now the wing and the light are attached. Now we'll assemble all the body pieces. There are a lot of M3 nuts that need to be pressed into each one of these parts. The motor cover, one here, one here, 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 in the middle, and then one on the back. And then on the front piece you have one here, and one here, but then you have these two that you need to slide in from the side. You can just kind of push them in with a screwdriver. And then you have one on the front, one that goes inside here. I found it's just easiest to pull this one through with a bolt. So stick the nut in there, put a bolt in there, and then pull it through. And then you have the nose piece, which is by far the most challenging piece. You have to put a nut in here and a nut all the way up into here. This one's not so bad, but this one is really tight and hard to get in there. So just do your best. I pushed it in with a screwdriver. So we'll attach the center body to the motor cover with three M3 by 8 millimeter screws. There's what it looks like together. Now we'll attach the front piece onto the center body with two M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Now the front's on, now we'll attach the nose piece. I use an M3 by 12 millimeter screw to put this on just because it's a little easier to reach the nut in the front piece. So the screw just goes in here, then it just screws on into this hole into the front section. And there's the bulk of the body assembled. Now the lid actually gets held on with this pin and the turning vanes up front. The pin actually sets in here and in here. So just press it in this hole and then you can slide the lid on top of that. There's the pin inserted, and then the lid just fits on that pin. Now we can slide the completed body onto the chassis. You just kind of have to slide it under the rear wing. Be careful, that rear wing is kind of fragile. 
Just slide it in easy. Again, the turning vanes are what actually hold the lid down. So they go in this hole underneath here, and then they connect to the top of the lid. Like that. One for each side. Now we can flip the whole car over and put some M3 by 8 millimeter screws in to attach the whole body to the base. One in the nose. These two are for the servo mount. We'll use those during the electronics install. One screw here. Another over here. One right here. Another right here. And then finally, one in the very back. Now we can put the front spoiler on. This one goes on with an M3 by 12 millimeter screw. So we'll flip the car over. The spoiler mounts like this. And then your screw goes here. At this point, you can mount your side rear view mirrors and your camera mount. They will fit in here pretty snug, but I suggest you add a little glue. I think I'm going to actually leave mine off for now and reprint these in silver to give it a little more snap. So I'll attach those later. Now we'll just press all of our tires onto our wheels. Like so. Then we'll attach our rear wheels. Our rear ones are the ones that are keyed. The front ones just have spots that bearings go in. They're round. So here are the rear ones. We'll slide it on the axle. Then you'll put your wheel lock nut on your axle to hold the wheel on. And then you'll secure it with an M3 by 8 millimeter screw. There's one. And there's the other one. And then on the front wheels, we'll take our 8 by 12 by 3 and a half bearings and press them in the rims. One on each side. Then we'll slide them on the front axles. We'll secure it with a wheel lock nut. And an M3 by 8 millimeter countersunk screw. There's one. And there's two. And there you go, the shell of the car is built. And the next one will get all the electronics added and hopefully take it out for a test run. A big thanks to Daniel Norray. He did an amazing job at modeling all these parts and the mechanics to make this whole thing work. All of his information will be in the description below as well as a list of all the parts that I used. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Wish they'd stop doing construction outside, cause I'm trying to make these videos.